Right, let's take a look at building the transom. This is probably one of the more complicated elements of this boat. And um, in all honesty, when it came to working out a system for kitting this, it was a real head scratcher for me. So um, after several different revisions and a couple of different attempts at various different ways to approach this, this is what we landed on. So I'm really looking forward to uh, trying this out in miniature form and seeing if it works. Hopefully it does. So, there's a curved transom on this boat. Um, it sits vertical, which makes things a little bit easier. Um, various different transoms in different boats. Some of them are curved and raked, which is when they're tilted either forward or aft. And that makes things even harder again. Luckily, this one is vertical. So we've only got the curvature to, um, to deal with, but that does make things quite complicated when it comes to measuring, because it's very hard to pick a reference um, to work off of, <clears throat> to square things up, uh, it becomes a lot harder. So things like the frame construction board is nice because we've got a nice flat plane that we can work in for every frame. So referencing heights and widths is really easy. With the curvature of a transom, it's a little bit more tricky. So let's get uh, working on the jig. So the transom is made in this jig system like a little cradle basically, which is gonna help us to uh, spring in the curvature of all the various different parts. And that is all part of the CNC cut um, jigs file. So you can see we've got these transom mold forms, which are the curvature. And you see they've got a little cutout in them for a half housing joint. So that all of this just kind of slots together and goes together really nice and easily. Then we've got a transom mold joiner, which is what this is and that just fits into that half housing joint and slots together like that. So this is a very common joint to be used within CNC work and it's really nice because everything just slots together, squares up and fits quite nicely. It's a little bit specific on material thickness. So again, this comes down to the same point I made before. Um, I really don't recommend altering the thickness of um, timber that you use for things like this because it will affect that housing joint and it won't then um, slot together quite so easily. They've also got little reliefs cut in them. As you can see, we call these dog bones within uh, CNC work and that allows you to effectively clear a square corner within a um, a cutout such as this because you can't cut a square corner with a CNC you have to do this little um, circular relief in the corner that allows joints such as this to slot together so those are already in there let's get slotting it together um, this probably wants to be glued I would think I'm actually just going to slot this together dry and then I'll possibly just put a little glue fillet on the inside depending on how tight fitting the joints are this will probably be okay actually just kind of dry fitted. So I know I've been saying throughout this series that I've been um, scaling everything, doing the plans exactly as they are in the, um, with the real boat. There's a couple of elements that I have actually had to change and they're only minor little changes, but um, I did need to do them just to make things work. And this is actually one of those because um, these half housing joints were so small, I had to uh, just slightly rework them in order to get them to, uh, to slot together properly. So tiny little difference within the, uh, the plan set, but um, Exactly the same principle, it's just different clearances on the, uh, on the cutouts. So there you can see an example of how those little dog bones just clear a corner so that we can get uh, a square part into a non-square cut hole. 
So that is the uh, transom cradle made up. You'll notice that there is a flat on the bottom side of the mold forms, and that is just so that it can sit on a um, work surface like this. You'll probably be on the floor, I would think, um, with the full size boat, because this is going to be quite big actually. But um, you can see that those joints are actually really tight fitting, so I haven't glued those. Um, if you've got a little bit of play in your joints, I would probably just slot all this together dry and then just fill at the corners. Um, I suspect this is going to be okay dry fit because it's actually quite a tight assembly by the time you've got all those joints in together. So that is our initial form and then we've got to put a skin on that. So I'm using a piece of uh, ply just because I've got one and a half mil ply and it's ideal for that. What the plans spec and what I probably recommend is like an MDF or even a, a melamine faced MDF. You probably can't get a melamine faced MDF in six mil thickness. This wants to be six mil with the, uh, with the real boat. This is one and a half mil here and um, that will spring into the curvature. So we then want to stick that um, skin on the inside of there and I think I'm going to try that with my quick set and mitre fast glue. I'm gonna have to be a bit quick with it. Let's do that. God, this glue is really horrible stuff if you've ever used it in any sort of quantity. Make your eyes water. So there we go, there is our skin glued onto the framework. Flip that over and you can see what we've got. That actually glued up surprisingly well using that uh, mitre fix because you haven't got a lot of time with that to get things in place. So you probably want to do that with an epoxy or you could even use something like a PVA with this. Actually it's, it's not going in the boat obviously so it doesn't really need to be um, a specific glue on that. Um, whatever works for you and gives you enough time to get it in place. There's quite a possibility that when you're doing this on the full size boat, you're gonna want something like little screws in through there or pins just to hold that in place. Obviously I can hold that down with my hands, but um, doing that with a big sheet might be a little bit more tricky. So slight difference there, but um, that's what we've got. So that is the curvature of our transom and you can see what that's going to form here. So this is our jig set up and then we're going to start to build the transom within that. So what we've got, transom parts, we've got the inner skin for the transom and then we've got sides, bottoms and deck beams. Now what happens with all of this and um, with all the laminations that I've done actually they're all sized oversized to allow for slippage between laminations and cleanup after the, um, after the glue set. So what you've got with the transom patterns is two different sizes. You've got one actual size part and then four oversized parts. So what we're gonna do there is we're gonna laminate all those together and then we're gonna use the actual size one as our guidance for finishing the part down to size. So you can see that shown in the drawer in there, whether or not that picks up on camera, but um, yeah, we've got, you can see one actual size lamination and four oversized ones. And we'll see in a bit what that allows you to do. So we've got our jig set up. That is gonna help us to form our curvature. So the first thing to go into that is gonna be our transom skin. Okay, so we're gonna spring our transom in. I think actually what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna draw a couple of reference marks on this. So a vertical center line is gonna be a really good idea to have here. That's 
that's going to be a helpful reference to have. And then I think what I'm also going to do is mark the heights of these two trying points so that I know that this is square within the jig. That's going to um, also be helpful for taking measurements from. So we'll get that roughly centered on the jig and see what we've got. Okay, so I've gone for a center line. I've scribed that chine line right across the whole board. So that will allow me to center this on the uh, point of the keel there. Set the height of the chine so they're the same. There we go. And now we know that this is square within our, um, our construction board. Now we really want to hold that in place. I think probably the best way to do that is going to be some double-sided tape or a couple of little dots maybe of the mitre fix, which is what I've got here, and I think I'm gonna use that. So we'll just put a few little dots of that on. Now that doesn't wanna be permanently stuck to that, that wants to be removable. So something like double-sided tape, um, or possibly some little screws actually, through that inner skin, um, I can't really screw into this based on the thicknesses that I'm working with here, but with, if you've got 18 mil jig components, you'd be able to put a couple of little screws in there and just pin that in place. That just wants to be temporarily pinned. And that then forms the uh, positioning element for all of our components that go within that, which we want to laminate on an individual basis. So we'll start by doing the deck beam. As I mentioned, we've got full-size laminations, four full-size laminations, and one actual-size lamination. So we want to stack those up and align them all. And what you see is that that gives us the opportunity to get all these glued together, but there's a margin around the outside for, uh, for cleanup to allow for movement and slippage, because there's almost certainly going to be that in the case of uh, gluing this up. So then we use our transom skin to position these equally and get them in the right place within the setup here. And that can basically done, be done just by sighting an equal gap around the outside. Certainly for the uh, deck beams and the bottoms, these just want to be curved in this plane um, uniformly. The sides actually have a very slight curvature to them, but because they're vertical, it's not quite so much. But um, the main curvature is obviously in this plane. So we want to position those like that and then finish off the lamination with the actual size part. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a fiddle and there are going to be a number of ways that you can hold this down. Um, as with all the lamination jigs, there are access holes in all the beams and those are there to allow for clamps to go through. So if you've got some long F clamps, you might be able to reach these. That's not gonna be the case for some of the more central portions of the uh, jig. And in that instance, what you would be able to do is drill a big hole in the, um, in the jig skin with a hole saw so that you can get access for a clamp to go through there. In my case, I've not got any clamps that are that small that are going to go through there. So what I'm going to do is probably screw some little um, little turn cleats onto this and use that to uh, hold the parts in place. Now, at this stage of the process, we do not want to be bonding this framing to the inner skin. It will get bonded to it at um, a later date, but not right now. We want to form each of these lamination pieces on an individual basis, let those dry, clean them up and then we'll uh, assemble the frame as a whole thing. So to stop that sticking for now, I'm going to use a masking tape for the full size boat. I would probably recommend a sheet of polythene just put over the top of this so that you're not going to bond anything to the skin. 
Okay, so I'm gonna be using a type one glue. As I mentioned in some of the previous videos, I'm using slightly different glues for um, this process just so that I can crack on and show it to you. When you're gluing these up on the real boat, you're gonna, gonna to want to be doing this with a thickened epoxy. And um, if you're building the real boat, I highly recommend that you get the Goujon Brothers book on wooden boat construction and follow it because it is the Bible for building boats like this. Definitely recommend following the procedures that they, um, they teach you in there. So for lamination for something like this, you're gonna be wanting to mix your epoxy to probably like a ketchup um, consistency and coat each face of the lamination that you're gluing. Probably use a notched, notched spreader as well. You might have seen me um, using those for laminations before that gives you a really nice even coverage of the epoxy over the surface. And you're gonna to wanna to be thickening the epoxy with something like a colloidal silica or their um, high density filling compound as well. Either one of those for, for laminations like this. As I say, I am tight bonding just to um, get things moving on. Okay, so we've got all five of our laminations. We're gonna put those into place. And uh, I've decided I'm just gonna use some clamps that go right over the outside of this board. And I'm actually just gonna mark that outer line on just so it's really clear where it is. Through the masking tape. So just an initial spring of that into place and I'm just gonna make sure that um, everything's gapped nicely. You're gonna get slippage with laminations like this. It's a bit of a byproduct of, uh, of doing things so you might need to loosen stuff off and re-tighten it. Okay, so that is a deck beam glued up. Now things to check for and make sure that you've got right is um, you can see we've got slippage here between the laminations and that is pretty much always gonna happen when you're laminating parts. That is the reason that we've got oversized dimensions for anything that's laminated in this boat. It all accounts for you being able to clean this up post lamination. So the main thing to check for is that the oversized laminations are outside the boundary of the actual size one. So what we'll do is we'll machine these um, larger ones down to meet the size of the inner one and then that will give us a nice clean laminated part. The other thing to make sure is that um, it's central, so you've got equal gapping either side, and that it's square in this plane as well. So you wanna make sure that you're at the same height either side, and that's gonna give you the uh, correct curvature within that part. So now that that's glued up, I'm also gonna do the bottom frames in the same glue up process and what we'll do is we'll let those dry and then we'll do the two side frames as a separate thing and I'll show you a slightly different method, um, different approach for how we can do the side frames. Okay, so there's the bottom frame glued up. You can just about see it in there underneath all those clamps. Again, same process. We want to make sure that this is square in this direction and equal distance side to side as well. Um, obviously clamping it like this is completely unfeasible for the uh, full size boat, but as I said, you could quite feasibly drill a hole through this skin here and um, you know, a clamp like this will We'll quite happily drop through a little hole that will just clear the bar here and then you can clamp it from closer in to the uh, to the source as opposed to coming from the outside of the jig like i have here but obviously i can't do that on this miniature scale so we're going to let those two laminations dry up and then um, tomorrow we'll get them cleaned up and uh, see what they look like Okay, so there we have our curved deck beam for the top of the transom framing. And you can see that we've got 
this is the size of the part that we actually want the actual finished part and that is from our actual sized piece so we've got plenty of material around the outside of that on all sides to um, clean up so here we go okay so if you're anything like me you'll find yourself um, doing this all the time as soon as I've done a job I go home and I think about it for the night and I instantly come up with a much better solution for how to do it that's exactly what I've done in this case so um, I'm going to use a different method for the sides that I think is actually going to be a lot more straightforward than all the clamps and stuff what we're going to do is we're going to drill some holes through the lamination so we're going to dry fit them in place drill two holes through them in this case but um, probably more in the case of the full-size boat and we're going to screw through the inner transom skin and also through the skin on the jig we're going to use those screws to pull the laminations down to the jig surface and use that as our clamp that also doubles up as a um, system for preventing or reducing slippage between the laminations because the screws are going to be going through a hole that we've pre-drilled when everything's dry it's going to um, help us to realign those parts back in the same position that was my brainwave for last night so i'm going to try that for um for this one now so i've got one on the sides dry assembled and all lined up nicely and i'm just going to drill two holes through that That wasn't great. Okay, not so much for laminations. I'll use some pins. Okay, so it kind of works, but um, these laminations are so fragile because they're only one and a half mil thick and they're solid timber that um, they're really not gonna take a lot. So that one's split. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use pins instead in those holes for alignment, stop everything slipping and actually this is one in such little force to hold it down. I can probably just put masking tape over this and hold it. But I, um, I really think on the full size boat, screwing these down will be a, a really good, easy, clean way to hold them. And uh, it also actually allows you free access all the way around the outside of the part. So you'll be able to clean up the epoxy quite nicely. I think that's definitely gonna be the way to go on the full boat. So I'm gonna get both of those sides glued up and um, then we'll have all of our framing parts done. So there's our side frames glued up. I can highly recommend those pins through the laminations. That made it so much easier to um, keep everything in line when it glued back up, stop the slippage between laminations and um, keep its position on the board as well. Drill right through the um, inner skin of the transom and through the uh, board skin. Just pushed a little pin through there and that made things so much easier. So I would certainly recommend that either with pins or um, with screws if you're clamping the full size thing. I think that uh, would be a much better system actually. So there we go, we'll let those dry up and uh, we'll clean up all four parts and then we can start to put the transom framing together. Okay, so we've got our transom parts cleaned up now. Nice, neat, clean looking laminations, which is what we want. Now my primary focus for um, clean up on these parts is really the inner faces. So particularly the jointing faces. So the ones that are gonna make the sides to the bottoms and things like that. And the inner faces of the, uh, of the frame parts. The outer edges, we're gonna do beveling work on those further down the line anyway. So it's not gonna to hurt to have a little bit of extra material there and they don't really need to be um, that clean. I've obviously just taken the glue off, but you can see that I've left them slightly oversized. So that should mean that we can now align all of our parts. So let's see how they go together. So 
it's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to just, of course, stick it together with my own mitre fix glue. Now on the full size boat, I would highly recommend a bit of additional strengthening of these joints in this instance. When I've done transoms similarly to this before, I've used the uh, Festool domino system and put dominoes in there to give it extra alignment and also glue surface area between the two components. That works really well, but something like a biscuit joint or a um, dowel joint, I would definitely recommend here, both for alignment of the parts, um, but also for extra glue surface area as well. I obviously can't fit a Festool domino or a dowel into this joint because it's so small, so I'm just gonna use Mitafix, but um, as I say, probably do something additional on the, uh, on the full size one. Yeah, so I'm just gonna get these glued up one at a time. So again, this inner skin is still serving as your alignment process here. So what I've done is that I've made sure that we've got equal spacing for all these parts to position the deck beam first. And then as I put that joint together, I'm just checking down this bottom edge that the um, actual size part is lining up with the inside of the skin on both sides, just to make sure that we're gluing everything up nice and uh, true. Okay, so there is our completed outer transom framing, nicely sprung into the curvature of our transom. We've got a bit of extra material on the outside and um, nice clean lines on the inside. So we can see what that looks like. We've got a bit of extra perimeter for the inner skin because the inner skin actually runs over the outside of our um, bottom planking and side planking and deck planking things like that, but it still gives us a good sizing gauge for uh, for positioning everything here. And the main thing to focus on really is that the gapping is equal on both sides. So whatever that gap you find being, just make sure it's the same both sides. So there are several additional timbers that need to go into the transom. As you can see here, we've got a range of vertical beams that um, go in between the top and bottom transom bow or a deck beam and bottom. Now there's um, a number of ways that they can be installed into the framing of the transom. And we'll look at a couple of those because we're actually going to install these a little bit further down the line. These timbers have various interactions with different parts within the boat. So you can see um, there's a bit of a, a gap on this one here. That's because that fits into a, um, a keel pad where the, uh, where the keel lands into the transom and there's some additional timber there. And you'll notice that these two are short as well and that's because they land on top of the stringers within the boat so because of those various interactions with different things i'm going to leave the transom framing um, at that for now and then we're going to get the rest of the items of the boat done and then we'll start to look at that again as we dry fit all the uh, various other parts and we'll just dial those in so we'll look at how um, those timbers will be connected to the transom framing a bit further down the line. So next up, let's get the frame positioned on the uh, strong back legs. A slightly different approach for the transom strong back legs. Um, as we saw in the last video, these are the CNC cut ones which help position the transom's height. So um, let's get the frame on and take a look at that. So we've got the transom strong back legs and as you'll note, they actually fit to the side rails of the strong back rather than directly flat across the face like these. Um, they use the rung still to maintain a vertical plane. And we've got a little bit of beveling to do on these. So this is gonna be our first look at some of the beveling that we've got to do on, um, on various parts within the boat. And this is gonna illustrate a rule that we're gonna follow um, throughout everything that we bevel within the boat. So you can see there, the, uh, the landing of that leg needs to be beveled. Now, 
to get correct position, what we've got to do is we've got to bevel the large side down until the smaller side touches the frame. So that gives us an indication of what our bevel's got to be. So we've got to do a little one there on the um, mating face of that leg. And you can see we've got a similar scenario on the uh, bottom frame notch there. So the inside of that cutout is cut to the, um, to the right size and then the outside is the one that we want to bevel to match. And the reason for that is because of course we're cutting this on a CNC machine. So these have to be at 90 degrees to the uh, component in that direction. We can't really cut bevels like that on a CNC, not particularly easily anyway. So um, we'll put some little bevels on those and once all of those are done, that will start to give us our correct positioning for the transom. Okay, so there we go. We have the transom framing set up on the strong back legs. So you can see we've got little bevels there now that just match the framing on the, uh, that match that transom framing. Just a slight bevel on the top edge there for the uh, radius of the transom. So there's our transom assembly on the strong back. And uh, this follows the same principle. So we're gonna set the height of this with the, uh, the waterline one mark. And we'll do various other measurements and things when it comes to a final install of this. We need to check that this is perfectly vertical and that our gapping for these legs is correct. So that the transom is centered uh, athwart ships and is a correct height and is square. And there's loads of measurements that we'll do um, on all the frames actually when it comes to um, pushing the button for uh, a proper glue up. Did anyone happen to notice that I installed the transom upside down just then? The transom, of course, should be bottom up because we built the boat upside down and I just put it in the wrong way around. With it flipped, actually all the bevels and everything pretty much work out um, perfect. So uh, certainly on this tiny scale, that was a bit of a lucky one. Don't install your transom upside down. Now it's the correct way up. So that's all we're going to cover in this video. In the next video, we're going to be starting to make some of the other laminated items for this boat. So we'll do the stringers and we'll do the stem and then we'll follow the same procedure, put them into the strong back as we um, gradually get the list of components ready to uh, start to put the whole boat together. So hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.